Hello everyone, I will be now introducing to you for the 4 p.m. session Mr. Raman Zaghi, a software engineer for ARM. Um, please give him a warm welcome, please. Thank you. Is this working? Yep, thank you. So, hello everyone, I'm Ramin. Um, I've been at ARM for, for a few years now, three, four years. And I'm delighted to present some um, exciting technical details here for you today about ARM. I've joined ARM in uh, at the end of 2009, helping with the GPU team. Um, ARM designs Mali GPUs. Um, I joined because of my background in gaming. I tried to help the ecosystem team, and then I moved on to the CPU processing um, compute subsystems division, which is focusing on the CPUs as opposed to GPUs, but I have a bit of experience in both. Um, so what, what I'm going to talk about today is uh, mainly running your, well, optimizing your applications uh, for Android um, on ARM platforms. Um, what I'm going to do is to basically show you a few common problems um, uh, that uh, most people face. Uh, you might not notice these problems. For example, if your app is consuming too much battery, that might not be very obvious, but um, it's something that will be noticeable if somebody uses your app very long. And then after introducing you to some common methods of uh, analyzing your apps, um, I'll try to explain a few details about how you could go about like fixing these these problems. Um, so as some of you know, I, I actually like to ask first, um, how many people here are already developing for Android? Um, okay, iOS, maybe iPhone. And how many people are interested in starting to develop for? <laughs> okay, quite a few people. So you, th those who are beginners will, will might struggle at some points because uh, some of the slides might be quite advanced, but there is something for everyone here. Um, what we are facing today in mobile space is that the apps have uh, very limited resources. Um, you could be constrained by things like battery, uh, limited network resources, um, memory, and common problems that desktop applications faced maybe a decade ago. So uh, it's, it's quite important to actually consider all these different um, aspects of developing for, for mobile phones when you develop your apps. Um, just for information, actually, I shouldn't credit all these slides to, 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 to myself. It's, um, it's a collective work of my colleagues as well. And uh, there are some slides that actually I have less experience in and some slides that um, I've spent a lot of time working on. Um, but if you have any questions towards the end of the session, I'll, I'll, I'll try to answer. And if not, we can, we can always um, basically get you somebody at ARM who knows a lot more about those details that you want to know and put you in touch with someone. Uh, so, so some 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 common analysis tools. Um, what you what 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 you see is that um, sometimes your your apps might be uh, might be CPU or GPU bound. So you know if 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 your app is doing a lot of stuff on the GPU, doing a lot of graphics processing, uh, then 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 uh, technically speaking, we call that a GPU bound app. Or if your app is limited by the CPU power, you know, you're, you're not doing much graphics, you're doing a lot of work on the CPU, uh, so your, your app might be CPU bound. Um, there are lots of tools that Google has provided already, and they're, gr they're great tools. Um, they come with uh, the Android device toolkit, the ADT, which is uh, supplied as a development package for Android. Um, does anybody use Eclipse? I mean, those who develop for, for, for Android, of course, but uh, anyone else? Okay, a few people, that's good. I've, I've heard some people try to basically integrate the command line tools into Visual Studio and develop for Android, but uh, that's, that's a bit uh, kind of not really what um, the Android team at Google expects you to do. Uh, there are native tools and, and graphical, really nice graphical user interfaces developed for Eclipse if you haven't developed for Android. Uh, try Eclipse is free and um, it, it does work on all platforms, including Windows and Linux. Uh, so, as I said, Google has provided a lot of um, great tools already, but um, at ARM, we have also tried to basically add to the tools that Google provided. 
uh, we have a few. I'll, I'll get to that in a, um, in a, in a little bit. Um, there, there are some tools from ARM as well. They're free and they integrate into Eclipse as well. So it kind of fits into your workflow if you're already developing for Android. Um, so um, there are there are a few tools that um, do static analysis for you. So instead of um, basically running your code and looking at your code, you, you can you can run these tools um, that come with the Android ADT to uh, um, analyze your code and, and give you warnings about uh, you know you're if if you're doing a part of your um, coding uh, the way that that um, the guys at Google don't like, you know this tool um, warns you. I'll get to it. It's called Lint. Then there is the dynamic analysis tools um, that you can use. The DDMS, the uh, um, Android Debug Monitor system, is another tool that you can use to uh, monitor your app as it's running. And um, I'll show you a few slides with some details about how you can use the uh, DDMS uh, to, to basically optimize your code for different purposes. Um, you have um, other a few other tools, including SysTrace. So these, what you see on this slide, they are um, stuff that are already in the industry. A lot of people use them, and they're mainly provided by Google. Um, these are not what um, ARM has provided, but um, I'll list those later, the ones from ARM. Um, so what I want you to do is to really think about how um, your app might be affecting the device it's running on. Um, there could be bottlenecks in, in, in the app's performance that could be parallelized. So you can start thinking about multi-threading your app. There are you know, advantages, disadvantages. I'll get to that in a bit. Um, then there is um, the, 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 the opportunity to um, write the code in native C. Um, you might have heard of the native development kit, the NDK, which comes um, as part of the um, AOSP, the Android open source project. And um, of course, um, ARM likes to say that if you write your code for ARM in C or in assembly, that runs faster. Uh, and um, it does run faster in many cases. And I can show you a few slides later that, um, that tell you a few numbers, you know, exa exactly how writing in native code will improve your code, your, your apps. But that's not always true. There are some cases where uh, coding in Java could actually um, be as good as, as native. Um, writing in native, of course, makes it very complicated for you to, um, to debug your apps compared to relatively compared to writing everything in Java. And you have to, of course, be familiar with the target device and make sure that what you're writing is, is portable across uh, many different uh, mobile phones and tablets. So it's not an easy job to do, but uh, what I'm trying to do here is to basically introduce you to a few free tools, open source libraries that will try to um, take the responsibility off your shoulders and basically um, not require you to, to learn all the details of the devices that you're trying to develop for. So this is um, this is is everybody hearing me at the back? I feel like maybe we could. Okay. Um, this is Lint. Um, this is the static analysis tool that I that I uh, mentioned earlier. It comes with Android's uh, development toolkit ADT, um, free of course, free of charge. Uh, this is something that Google provided. Uh, and what 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 you see in this slide is that um, we are running a sample code. Uh, it's an open source game called SGT Puzzles. Um, it's trying to basically run through the code and pick up the stuff that, that, that might cause you problems or things that will definitely cause the system to consume either too much battery or slow down. Uh, in this particular example, you can see that uh, there is object allocations, um, if you can read that, uh, are happening in draw calls. So you might already know what 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 a draw call does. Uh, so in Android, Surface Flinger goes through all the apps, uh, kind of fetches all the data from 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 um, the buffers, and tries to kind of compose them into a single buffer and display it, um, on the screen. So if you're doing something like object object location, like uh, calling new, for example, uh, during a draw draw call, it's going to cause a lot of problem for um, for your uh, target device because there will be loads of 
um, allocations happening, which is quite expensive. And then at, as, as a result, the GC, the garbage collector, uh, collector will try to um, clean all the, all the objects that you've created. So you're actually causing two problems for the system there. And what's, what's great about Lint is that it doesn't just warn you about, uh, you know, generically about uh, something that might be wrong. It gives you very, very detailed suggestions as well um, on this side, on the, on the right-hand side. Um, how you can basically improve the problem and what the problem is. What's also very interesting is that um, this is a, another example. It's, uh, it's a, uh, another open source um, game that we've picked. It's called GLTron. You can you can you can try it yourself at home. Um, uh, what's very interesting is that Lint gives you categories of problems. So. In this second column, you can see it's called category. You can see things like performance, usability, um, uh, security. So it tells you exactly what uh, aspect of your, your app you might be um, concerned with to do with that line of code. So it's quite a good tool. Uh, make sure that you try it at home. Um. So. This is what, what we call static analysis. You're not running your app. You're not using a model or, or a um, uh, dev kit. Next, we can, we can look at the dynamic analysis methods. One of them is uh, using DDMS. DDMS is uh, something that, uh, again, comes with the ADT, the Android device toolkit. And with the DDMS, what you can do is you can Connect it to your device. Uh, so you've got a host, either a Linux host or a Windows host. You run your Eclipse platform, and you open up this tab uh, while you're connected through, uh, let's say, a USB connection to your target device, which is running your app. What what the DDMS gives you is that, um, as you can see, it shows you all the threads and processes running on your system at that moment. So it's a real-time system. It's dynamically updating itself, which is quite quite good because as you're playing your game, as you're uh, tapping on on different buttons on your on your app, you can see what's happening, the effect um, from 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 uh, the kernel point of view. Um, what you can do here is. You can see that the U time and S time, the U time is the amount of time spent on the user space. If you're familiar with Linux terminology, uh, you have kernel and user, user space. And the S time is the system time spent on the kernel side. You can see that thread there numbered uh, with TID 15153, which is called GL thread. It's, it's taking the most time. So at that moment, whatever was running on that system, um, like I said, it's, it's a game called GL Tron we tried. Uh, that that thread called GL thread, uh, which you can relate to OpenGL, the um, the graphics rendering library, that's taking the most time. But but um, of course it's obvious it's taking the most time. It's not giving you much more detail. You really want to dig down and see why it's taking much time. Is there anything you can do? You can uh, can you can you basically improve this in any way? So what you'll use is trace view. Um, with trace view, what you can do is um, you have a list of uh, you have a list of um, threads with with functions. So so you'll be able to see actually what functions are within each thread are are are, are consuming the most CPU time. Um, there's something interesting about um, this trace view um, tool. And um, that is, if you open one of these threads, you can see um, s a stack of calls. You can see list of functions, um, their names, how much time they're consuming, and a percentage of how much time they're consuming compared to the rest of the system. So this is actually a much more detailed view compared to this previous slide, which tells you only about the processes. Um, So the, 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 the next tool that I want to show you, um, which helps you identify problems in your system, uh, bear in mind that I'm, I'm, I'm still showing you the tools. I'm not uh, talking about the details of how you could fix these problems. Uh, the next tool is called Heap Monitor. It's probably not as interesting to some developers as the previous tools. But what it does is um, it tells you if you're doing any kind of object allocation within high-frequency calls. 
So um, let me see if this um, sh picture shows you any um, good examples. So if you remember in a few previous slides, I've, I've shown you where um, Lint was telling you that there is a static allocation happening within the draw calls. So here you can see actually in real time uh, that this allocation is happening within this thread, within that function, and it's kind of a warning that you shouldn't be doing something there. You're, you're doing something wrong. Um, I think the next slide actually includes a detailed example of this. So um, let's see which one it is. It's the eighth one, I think. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if um, I'm not sure which one exactly in this example. But but down here you can see that. Um, you can see that what's happening is that your, your application is consuming a little bit of heap at the beginning and then somewhere in between as time goes by the counter kind of is counting more object allocation. Um, the, the reason you should care about the heap is that on older platforms, of course the new, the new uh, phones, the newer phones as, as they come out, they, they have more memory, they, they provide more um, heap for each of the apps running on the system, but on older systems you might uh, be aware that there's only a limited amount of heap available to each app. Um, um, generally speaking, um, I think versions 2 and 3 and 4 of Android, uh, they had about, apps had about 16 megabytes of heap available. So if you're doing a lot of allocations, for whatever reason, uh, what happens is that suddenly you're, you're starting to run out of heap. And what Android does if, is, is um, if you're testing your app on a new platform and you're absolutely fine but run it on an older platform and uh, the older platform doesn't have as much memory uh, which means your app might run out of heap memory. What happens is that Android just kills the app and you have you want to be careful about that. There is a there is a GC button, um, the garbage collecting button at the top you can see you can actually as you're running your app you can close click on that and close the Dalvik VM to clear out the memory so that you can see actually how much memory app is using. Um, so this is one of those things again to, to be careful about. The heap monitor can, can help you identify if your app is consuming too much memory there. Uh, something else that is really interesting is that, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, you might want to consider multi-threading. So if there is something you can do in parallel uh, in your app to improve the performance, that's great. But multi-threading will use more heap as well. So the more threads you have, the more um, 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 caller stacks you have and the more uh, variables and, and, and the more heap is being allocated so it's kind of a double-edged sword you have to be careful if you're if you're doing multi-threading this tool can help you uh, identify whether or not multi-threading is increasing your heap uh, consumption by by a large margin um, network analysis uh, this is an area that I myself haven't spent much time um, but I can show you a few a few a few um, details about how uh, networking can be misused uh, and can cause a, a drop in your user interface performance um, or can consume too much battery. Um, this is a slide about um, a simple tool which is again which comes with the ADT, the Android Development Toolkit. Uh, it's a very relatively simple tool. There is another tool later later on during my presentation which is called ARO. I'll get to that, which is a bit that, that one is a bit more detailed, but um, this is a good starting point if you're if you're developing an app and seriously considering putting it out on the market uh, where you know thousands of people download the app, you have to really consider every detail of your app. I mean my uh, myself I come from a gaming background and um, I've always been interested in graphics and you know let's let's dig down to what's going on in in the native side and um, uh, you know as a hobbyist, I might never think about networking and what's going on there, but but as a professional developer, if you're working for a large company especially, you want to consider uh, really what your app is doing, even with the, with, with the most, um, you know, uh, most remote details that you might have never touched. Networking is one of those areas where you're not just using the CPU, you're not just um, um, uh, risking um, slowing down your UI, but you're also switching on a lot of other components with your system within your system so uh, the LTE radio uh, chips within your mobile phones if you start using networks uh, and you're not doing stuff like caching to improve the network usage you might actually run the risk of consuming a lot of battery um, 
and I'll get to a few more examples in a, in a bit. Um, what you see here is basically um, network statistics. It's showing you how much network is being used at what point. Again, this is, uh, this is a live tool, so as you're running your app, you can get these statistics. Um, so the next slide is basically about some uh, command line tools that we can use for improving the performance and battery consumption of our apps. This is one something called Dumpsys, an example of Dumpsys. So I don't know if you if you've ever looked at the Android um, options. There is there is a part if you've developed for Android, you've you've definitely seen this. There is a uh, there is a section called Developer Options on the settings. Uh, what you can do is you can switch on uh, profiling. For example, you can see that um, yellow arrow there is is pointing out to a profile GPU rendering. Uh, it causes the system to produce some optional information where your DOMSYS uh, command can actually extract and then uh, generate a file for you where you can use to analyze some data. Uh, now DOMSYS is one of those things that again um, needs recording. So you run your app and you run this command line tool. It extracts some information and dumps a huge amount of data which um, you know, if you just run DOMSYS for you know, one minute, two minutes, it, it produces megabytes of data and it will be quite difficult to uh, look through them with naked eyes. But what you can do is you can actually limit what you're getting out of DOMSYS. For example, we are here um, at the bottom, you see the example of DOMSYS graphics info. So you're passing a parameter there. You ask DOMSYS to generate uh, information related to graphics. So y y you're basically focusing on graphics. You're not worried about anything else. The data you get is, uh, in this example, you can see that we've run it on, on um, some, some, some activity in the system. And it's produced three columns, draw, process, and execute. This might not give you much information, but what you can do with the information there is you can be clever and actually try to visualize the data so that it's easier to, to look at and uh, basically understand what's going on in the system. So here we've tried to um, run this app. Uh, I think it's GLTron again. Uh, what we've done is we've, um, we've drawn the amount of time spent rendering. Uh, and you can see that. So, so, so. Um, a lot of devices use uh, the V-Sync Pulse. Uh, if you do gaming, you've definitely heard of this. What V-Sync is, um, is basically, it's basically a way of the system um, communicating with the display, with your LCD, that there is a frame ready so that the display can read, and read in the data and update, update itself. Uh, on average, most systems are using um, 60 frames per second V-Sync which means you have about 15 milliseconds of uh, time uh, to prepare your um, your frames. Up there you can see 15, that's, that's the amount of time you have for one frame if you're trying to basically stay within the boundaries of your V-Sync pulse. And it's very obvious at which point in time we are kind of getting very close to that 15. And, and, and if you get to that, to that point where you're basically hitting the 15 milliseconds and, and running a bit late, what happens is that sometimes you're not just missing one frame. Suddenly your app drops its performance by, by twice as much. So think about it. Instead of uh, being ready f uh, within 15 milliseconds, you're actually consuming not a bit more than 15 milliseconds. You're consuming suddenly 30 milliseconds because the next we think happens within the next 15 milliseconds which means overall your system is suddenly dropping by 50 percent. So it's, um, this is a way of using the data from DOMSYS. Um, so with this tool, SysTrace, uh, this is, uh, again, um, another tool from Google. What it, uh, what it does for you is that um, it basically tries to um, show you the details of what's going on within the entire system. So previously, I've shown you some tools that you could use to look at details of what's your, what your app is doing and how it's affecting the rest of the system. Now here, SysTrace, what it does is, is that it allows you to basically monitor the entire system and look at what's, what's your uh, system doing, how the other parts of your system affecting your 
your app and how your app is affecting other parts of your system. Um, it's again a command line tool. It's, it's relatively uh, limited because um, it's like a Python script that you run as your phone is running and it collects data for you for only five seconds. Um, five seconds is not long enough for many applications. We have a tool from ARM, which I'll tell you later, um, um, uh, which, which does much longer periods of uh, recording of data and then you can use um, very nice graphical user interfaces to analyze this data. But this is a good starting point. So you use, you use SysTrace um, and this is the output. It's quite nice actually. Um, what you're seeing here is that, again, um, um, this is the GLTron open source game, which I used in previous um, slides as well. What you can see here is that um, there is vSync at the top. You can see how often it's happening. So that's another part of system. Then there's Surface Flinger. Surface Flinger is um, the bit, uh, I shall remind you, where uh, the system is trying to basically collect all the buffers from different apps and compose them into the screen. Uh, and you can kind of uh, mix and match that with, with the rest of the information from your, your specific app. So here, thread number 29194, if you can see. What it's doing is that um, it's trying to render, cause the GL updater there to, to be triggered. And as you can see, it's, it's kind of happening in between vSyncs. Uh, it's not possible for me to show you on this slide, but what, what, what this HTML5 can do for you is to zoom in a bit more and see a bit more information. So you can see uh, if one of the threads is running and it's blocking another thread, which is quite useful sometimes. If you're, um, if you're not sure why your app is suddenly blocked, you can run uh, SysTrace for five seconds, get a lot of information, and then come to this page try to analyze it and uh, where you use this is on your host so it's dumping stuff into HTML5 you can open it up in any browser you use Chrome Internet Explorer Firefox and it's quite easy to uh, browse through uh, so we've been talking about profiling the system your app um, getting some details um, there is this um, Perfmon app from Chainfire uh, which is quite nice. I don't know if any of you have ever tried developing for um, desktop uh, platforms or or for console platforms. There are stuff like um, uh, VTune or NVIDIA's um, Perf, which basically um, project the results of um, analyzing what's going on in the system right on your app. So you're running the game and this app, what it does is it's projecting disk I.O. usage, the network I.O., and a few other uh, metrics from the system right on your app. So you don't need to go elsewhere to your host to look at the details and see what's going on. You can see what's happening right there on the screen as you're running the game. Um, something else to mention is that this app is free. Uh, you can get it on XDA Developer. Apparently, it's also available on the market if somebody wants to pay for it. Um, there's also um, a few tools, similar tools from uh, Qualcomm. Uh, Qualcomm designs their own GPUs, so their tools also um, have a specific tools for their own GPUs. Uh, again, in if, if you're developing, um, you can use their Turpin profiler, which is um, which needs, of course, the um, Qualcomm chipsets within the targets, within the target platforms. Uh, I don't know how I'm doing with time. I think we are still on time. So the NDK, this is the bit that we are, we are kind of getting to the more exciting parts of my presentation. Uh, the Native Development Kit, or the NDK, uh, allows you to write code directly for uh, C++. So if, you're, if, you're, if you've got a game written in the IOS, um, using Objective-C, or if you've got a game, open source game that you got from GitHub or somewhere and it's written in C and you've ported it to Android, what you do is you're most likely using the NDK because it's a very easy way of basically taking a code which is written in C and kind of uh, putting it inside a framework of an, um, of an Android app. But um, if you've done that, the tools that I've shown you so far are not going to help you with analyzing and profiling your app because those tools are focused on Java. So your, if your code is written in SDK in Java, uh, um, 
you're very lucky you can use all those tools but it gets a bit more tricky when you're writing in C++ or C and using the NDK um, it's getting better as, as new uh, versions of Android are, be, um, are being released uh, I don't know if you've heard today they've released the KitKat we don't have any KitKats here today unfortunately but it's improving so uh, they didn't have support for OpenGLES in there in the NDK it didn't have any um, um, it didn't have um, really good tools for debugging but um, thanks to Google they are trying to improve it and um, we at ARM we've created a few tools that makes it really um, much easier compared to the past to analyze the code uh, again what I like to say is that you can improve the performance of your code and a lot of other, other aspects of your code uh, by huge margin if you write in, in, in native code however that requires you to understand the details of your platform much more than you need to know when you're writing in Java uh, <coughs> so this might actually take us to a few tools from ARM there is a DS5 uh, has anybody used DS5 here has anyone heard of DS5 before okay so it's quite a good good slide and good part of the presentation because it's actually giving you information you haven't heard before DS5 or development studio 5 is, is a it's a name that we've given to our uh, package to our software package which helps you um, debug your Android applications actually DS5 is much much bigger than that uh, we've got an ARM compiler which is uh, you could say you know a proprietary compiler is um, um, is it's got some advantages over using GCC, but um, when it comes to Android, uh, the entire system uses GCC, so we're not really here concerned about the other parts of DS5 that are ARM specific. Uh, so I'm going to focus on the parts of DS5 that uh, are targeted at Android developers. Uh, there is a new edition of DS5, which uh, is called the Community Edition, and there is a limit on the um, on, on on using I'm using the community ed edition it's um, it's a um, it's a free tool so you don't need to pay for it if you're interested in using these tools and um, um, it's a lot more targeted at ARM platforms and um, Android devices are by large margin uh, on ARM platforms on ARM chips so you have access to the DS5 community edition and it's free uh, I think if um, your team is quite large by through the license it might be limited I don't know is it five or ten people I think up to ten people uh, within the same company um, you don't need to pay any license fees uh, but anyway you can try it at home um, what it does is that um, it gives you a set of tools which we have tried to improve for Android development and uh, for example the, the, the GDB debugger within the DS5 uh, is is improved by ARM so it's collecting a lot more information detailed information from CPU cores um, it might be a bit tricky to set it up at the beginning if you haven't used uh, you know Eclipse plugins before but if you have Eclipse already installed on your system it very nicely kind of integrates into the Eclipse system and, and it kind of prevents you from going to different websites and downloading loads of different tools um, there used to be um, another company which we worked with in the past where most people went and downloaded their GCC tool chain to do more ARM specific development but now with DS5, uh, the community edition, anybody can access it for free and it's all in the same package, you just download it and it kind of fits in, into your workflow very nicely. Uh, so, let's get into a bit more details about the DS5. You can see on this screen different views, different, uh, different panels and options that DS5 provides for you. Uh, this is slide I'll go through very quickly um, and then I can get into a few more more practical examples of using the, the DS5 um, it might be quite confusing at the beginning but there are basically with, with Android there are three different types of debugging that you can do or, or profiling that you can do there is the um, the very high level Java debugging which you can see in the middle the way it works is that you run the ADT and the um, Android debugger connects to what's called the ADB daemon which is running on your system so this this bit this blue bit behind the dashed line uh, at the bottom of the dashed line that's your Android system running with the Linux kernel at the bottom 
uh, and that bit at the top is your host running Eclipse. Uh, so Java debugging is one of the one of the things that you can do. Then there is the DS5 debugger, which does your C++ debugging. So that needs the GDB server, which comes as the DS5 within the DS5 package. So that GDB server is running on your on your system and providing information for your host. Um, there is a there is uh, there is there is this uh, feature within the DS5. It's called the Streamline. What it does is it gives you very very accurate information about running um, about your running system. The Gator D is a daemon running on your user space, and the Gator kernel uh, module is running on on your Linux side. So if you want to use the Streamline, which I'll explain in a bit, you need to build this kernel module. It's open source, it's free, it comes with the DS5 and uh, because it's a bit tricky for some people to build a kernel module, uh, we are trying to basically put it in some of the devices our partners produce so that people can just open up the device and start using it without needing to really worry about these. Uh, but if you're developing in the native code, the bits that you need to worry about are that bit where the DS5 is helping you to use the GDB server to debug your, info your, your apps. And if you really want to get into more details, even down to the instruction level and see you know, how your system is being affected by each instruction that is produced by your compiler, you can use the um, Gator method and Streamline. Um, Streamline has, has a few different uh, benefits, uh, which I'll get to in a minute. Actually, the next slide is about DS5, uh, sorry, uh, about Streamline. Um, so this is a quite a nice view of the streamline. Um, what it does is that you can see the CPU activity, a few different um, basically system metrics here. Um, the clock cycles, um, the cache, what's happening to cache, you know, how much cache is being used. Um, and at the that's the top view where you can see all the counters. Um, it's, it's extensible as well, so if there are stuff that are, that are not already in the DS5 streamline, um, metrics that you like to measure, the driver framework will help you to extend this system. Um, however, there are more than, um, I think, near to 50 counters already introduced into the system, so you don't need to really w uh, worry about adding or extending this uh, if you're just starting. At the bottom here, what you have is uh, the threads that were running on your system. So something to mention about DS5, uh, this streamline, is uh, it works by basically recording information while your system is running and does the analysis later. So you're basically running your system, um, you're, you connect your system onto, onto the host, your target onto the host and start recording. So it tries to collect data, collect data from, from your running system. And then as soon as you, st um, you press on the, on the stop recording, it tries to analyze the data and then display this information. Uh, what's, what's good about this is that you're not just looking at the, you're not just looking at the uh, metrics and what's happening at what time. You're also able to look at the threads and you're also look at able to look at the functions within those threads. Um, as you can see, there is, uh, there is a thread which I've highlighted down there. Um, it's, 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 um, it's showing the really dark red spots where there is a lot of CPU usage. You can see the uh, clock, clock rate of the CPU is going up there. Um, the CPU activity is increasing quite a lot. Can anybody hear me at the back? Because there is a bit of a problem with this. Um, so wha what you can do is that you can take your source code, if you've got access to the source code of the app you're, you're trying to analyze, and um, give it to the DS5. It tries to match the source code, different parts, different functions, to the, to the metrics that is collected. So it, it can be really helpful. Um, we, we at ARM use it quite often ourselves. Uh, it's not just for developers. It's, it's, it's being used seriously for improving system performance. Um, so I've explained these bits to you. Uh, I think we can get to the next slide, yes. Um, yeah, so this is a part of the uh, DS5 which we have been developing recently within the past 12-18 um, months. It's quite useful. So if you're working with ARM's GPUs 
on a device that um, has an ARM GPU. You can use the um, Mali GPU graphics analysis part of the DS5 Community Edition. Uh, what it does for you is that it tries to correlate between the uh, frame, the frame buffer. You can see some snapshots of the frame buffer of that app that was running at the time while you were recording your information. And it correlates the information to the CPU usage as well as the GPU usage. So um, it's kind of monitoring the OpenGLES APIs as well, uh, which helps you actually see where you're consuming a lot of G GPU and where you're consuming a lot of the CPU or if you're using both. Um, it's quite helpful when you're uh, trying to debug your apps as well because if suddenly you're blocked somewhere and nothing is happening you can actually extract data and come and take a look and uh, see you know who is consuming which part of the system uh, are there any sessions about the Mali GPUs later I think yeah if you're interested to learn a lot more details about the about developing on Mali GPUs there is a session later um, I think tomorrow yes it's tomorrow uh, but it's a very interesting part of the system, and especially if you're doing um, UI development um, which uses OpenGL, OpenGLES extensively, or if you're doing game development for uh, Mali-powered devices, this is a very helpful tool, which again comes with the DS5, free edition of the DS5. Um, so this is, this is showing you an example of exactly how you can use this information from Streamline. Um, here we have a function which shows that thread up there it's been using quite a lot of the system resources so what you can do is you can actually try to dig down into the into the system and see how this function is is using this the, the resources uh, of course it's very good because it shows you it helps you identify which thread and which function within the thread is uh, consuming the most resources but then you want to learn a bit more you want to you want to you want to learn uh, whether or not you're able to actually do anything about that that bit of the system. If it's the if it's the bottleneck, if if you're trying to improve the performance, if you're trying to basically um, um, make your app consume less battery, you can try and look at the detailed information. Um, so in this example, you can see that that function there um, within that particular thread was using eight percent of the of the of the system resources within a specific period of time. So if I go back, you can see there is two, um, I don't know if it's visible, if it's you can see that, there is two gray, gray lines. What, what you're doing there is basically you're telling to the streamline to show you what's happening within that period of time. You don't, you don't want to really worry about the rest of the running time of your app. So within that period of time, this is the information, this is the statistics that, that the, the, the streamline is, is showing you. Uh, what you can do then is you can actually click wi on, on that function if you've got the source code and if you've got, if you've got the object files that, that your compiler produced you can actually click and take a look at the detailed uh, system consumption on, on, on each line of the code so here you have, if, if you're that familiar with, with um, the ARM instruction set you can take a look at uh, which instruction relating to which line of the code is consuming how much of the CPU or GPU time um, this is quite useful, especially if um, if you've done everything else that you could do, but your system is still not doing what you want. You can you can really look at the detailed information here. Um, something else you might want to do is particularly with um, with battery constraint systems that are being popular that, that are getting popular by the day. You can you can do energy profiling. Uh, what what we do is um, with with a lot of the development platform development kits. What we do is we use this uh, relatively inexpensive dongle, um, which basically what it does is it plugs into your host system from the USB port, and it's got uh, three probes that you can connect to your development platform. Um, of course, if it's a mobile phone, which is a closed platform, you can't do this. But if you're developing with one of the uh, development kits, kits that come from um, ARM or ARM's partners, um, chances are you're, you're, you're able to see with inside the system, inside the hardware. You can plug this into up to three power domains, and it kind of feeds information back into the streamline that I've just shown you. And what it gives you is the voltage, the current, 
and the derived uh, power usage of, of, of your system at different periods of time. So as you are recording your information about the CPU consumption, uh, you can also collect energy data and see exactly how your platform in real time is consuming battery. So this is, this is, uh, this is pretty hardcore stuff, but some people do it, and uh, especially if you're developing very popular apps, um, like games, for example, you don't want to uh, end up in a situation where thousands of people are playing your games for hours and hours, but then realizing that the game or the app is consuming too much battery. Of course, um, there are limitations on how much you can improve on your energy consumption, but something like this can help you a lot. Now let's take a look at some um, screenshots. Uh, here what you see is at the top is kind of a um, set of information where you've al uh, that you've already seen. The, uh, the CPU consumption up there um, is showing you that within that period of time, the CPU was being used um, by about 50%. Um, is that 50%? It's almost 50%, yes. But then the new information that we've, we've taken out of the system using that USB, that, that energy probe, um, are the blue and orange lines. So there are here you can see three different um, power domains being monitored. The second blue one, the second line at the top, that's the cycles. So the more cycles, it means that the frequency of the CPU is higher. But we are interested in the energy consumption. So what's happening here is that you've got, like, for example, uh, CPU, and uh, I think this, the second orange line is the GPU power consumption. Um, what this particular screenshot is showing you is that uh, suddenly your apps are trying to use a lot of energy there, a lot of CPU. So your CPU is kind of um, being used almost 50% by 50% of their maximum power. But down here, the energy is not being increased, um, which means the system has taken quite a long time to, to clock up the CPU to, to allow a faster performance, better performance. Um, so this kind of information you can, you can extract by looking at the, at the visualized uh, energy and, and, and uh, resource consumption data. Let's move on to our next slide about um, this is the ARO, the network analysis tool that I, s I mentioned at the beginning. Uh, this is the slightly more sophisticated tool that you can use to analyze data, network data. Um, it's open source, it's free, and um, what you can do is you can run this on your, on, your, on your platform, on your device, and collect data on your host, on your laptop or, or desktop platform. What it gives you is that um, a lot of different types of information about whether or not you are um, using network, how much network you're using, and it gives you a few suggestions on how how you can improve um, the network usage on your on your apps and on your platform. Uh, I think there are a few more details here on this slide about ARO. Um, so it it might give you suggestions like, for example, down here you can see you know uh, your connections are taking too long, so maybe you're not closing the network connections that you've opened, or it might suggest that you could cache files. So if you're downloading uh, the same files over and over again, it could suggest that well maybe you should be caching these files so that you don't need to go um, up to the network and consume a lot of because going to the network is um, is is very 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 expensive. Um, so ARO gives you this kind of information. And it can be very helpful, especially if your apps uh, need a lot of connection to the internet. Uh, you might be doing um, you know, adverts on your apps. You might be doing things like um, collecting statistics and kind of supplying the server with this kind of information. And uh, looking at your app through AR ARO will help you identify parts that you could improve. Um, are we OK with the time still? Sorry? Four minutes only. Wow. This shows a bit more time here. Okay, this final try to um, quickly go through some of the NE10 slides. Um, I had a few more information about networking, but um, I'd like to mention NE10. Uh, if you've got only four minutes, I can quickly try to finish that bit. Uh, so, with with the NDK, what you can do is you can use uh, what we call the 
um, let me see which part, what we call the NEON. NEON is a specific ARM instruction set um, uh, which um, in the recent versions of ARM is becoming a, a compulsory part of the CPU. And as you can see, in this particular example, media compression used to take, in this particular app, used to take um, quite a lot of time in seconds. That's nearly 15 seconds, um, well, 13 seconds. And then we tried to write it in native code. And it's kind of reduced down to about two seconds. And using the SIMD, the parallel uh, vector processor in ARM, it's reduced down to about half a second. So using native code, and especially if you can target specific um, instruction sets, it can be really good. Uh, what we have at ARM is, um, let me show you some of the slides about NE10. So NE10 is a open source library that we have created at ARM. Um, it's got um, a lot of APIs that are already optimized for, for um, if you're interested in using the Neon instruction set, the vector processor, um, this is an example of, for example, uh, normalizing your vectors. So you're doing uh, 2D or 3D um, um, graphics processing or any kind of really complicated mathematics on your apps. What you do is you make a call to the native side and then use our library, which is optimized for uh, different ARM, uh, ARM, ARM SOCs, for different ARM CPUs. And um, you can see here uh, the green the green line shows how many times the function could be called within a s uh, fixed period of time. So uh, with Neon, you can get up to 20x performance. You can get uh, up to 20 20 times uh, performance improvement. Um, this is this is free. Uh, you can you can actually look up um, NE10 um, on Google. Uh, it's being um, published on on uh, the GitHub. Uh, there are loads of questions that were answered. Um, by the way, these slides will be available on mollydeveloper.com. Um, sorry, mollydeveloper.arm.com. Uh, you can take a look at a bit more details after um, this session if you're interested. Um, there's also the arm.com slash forward slash solution center where we've provided um, similar contents, videos um, about developing for Android, optimizing apps for Android, and specifically um, targeting ARM platform, of course. Um, I think it might be good if I see anybody has any questions. We're running out of time. Anybody questions? Okay. Thank you very much.